These are my picks for my favorite shortcuts to use in Ableton Live. I found that when I started implementing shortcuts every day using Live, my workflow was swifter and smoother. And since I know I'm not the only one who desires a smooth, swift workflow, I thought I'd share them with you. Now for all you Ableton ninjas out there who have been using Ableton for years, have read the manual back to front, and can run Ableton hanging upside down and blindfolded, you probably already know and use these shortcuts. But for all you newbies to Ableton who aspire to reach ninja status, these are sure to jumpstart your journey. The first shortcut I'd like to share with you is rather simple, but super useful. Option F11 will put you into full screen mode, hiding both your top menu bar and your dock, wherever it may be located. I find working in full screen mode removes all the clutter and the distractions of my desktop and lets me focus on live. If I want to reach any menu options, I simply hit Option F11 again, and I have all my options available to me. Option F11 really makes live feel like an instrument. Since your browser is the place where you will be accessing samples, plugins, effects, and instruments, my next shortcut, Option Apple B, lets you quickly and conveniently open and close your browser for instant accessibility. Whether you're in session view or arrangement view, each view has its own browser, meaning your browser can be opened in session view and closed in arrangement view. Once your browser is open, holding the option key while using your left and right arrow keys will allow you to jump in and out of your browser without the use of a mouse. Further using your arrow keys within the browser, you can navigate to any file or folder of your choice, much like navigating through your tracks. Since your instruments, effects, and plugins are dragged from your browser into your live set, being able to keep track of what has been placed where is very important. Using the shortcut Shift tab allows you to switch between track view and clip view. In clip view, you can see the specific details of any chosen clip, such as warp markers, envelopes, and quantization while easily switching back to track view, which shows you what devices are in the track to which that clip belongs, such as effects and instruments. Now something that you will be doing a lot of is starting and stopping playback. So the next shortcut I wanna recommend is shift space. Shift space lets you start playback from wherever you last press stop. When you're in arrangement view or in clip view, by default, Live will always start playback from wherever your insert marker has been placed, that is, wherever you double clicked on any point on your grid. If you would rather start playback from where you stopped, make sure to hold the Shift key when hitting the space bar. Now to get the most out of Ableton's unique grid structure, learning to control the grid resolutions will make your experience a lot easier. To narrow, widen, triple, or turn off the grid, hold down the Apple key while pressing one, two, three, or four. Since they are in consecutive order, you can easily try out different grid resolutions swiftly. Now that you know how to control the grid, how about controlling your loop size and positioning along the grid? Located to the right of your loop switch, you'll find a field that shows the length of your looped region. To double this region, hit Apple arrow up. To cut this region in half, hit Apple arrow down. I use this doubling and halving feature quite often, but let's say you don't want to double your loop and you don't want to half it. You really want to just incrementally increase the size of your loop. 
Based on your resolution choice, you can extend that loop by using the shortcut Apple left or right arrow. So as you move to the right, it'll extend your loop by your resolution grid snapping choice, and it will decrease it by the same amount. If you change your resolution, you'll change the amount at which you'll be able to lengthen or shorten that loop with the shortcut. And once you've figured out the length of your loop, you can move it along the grid simply by using your left and right arrow keys. This leads me into my next shortcut, Apple D. When you hit Apple D, Live will automatically duplicate whatever is highlighted or selected and place it to the right of your selected region. You can also do this with single tracks. Simply select the track and hit Apple D. This will duplicate the entire track, all envelopes, all effects, all chains, everything. You can also use this shortcut in session view to duplicate any clips of your choice. When I'm working in arrangement view, I often use this next shortcut. Apple I will insert silence. It works like the duplicate command, except that instead of content being duplicated, an empty space will be inserted the length of your selected loop or region. I've found this very useful when I've got a groove going and it's going and going and oops, I run out of space. So I select a bigger region and I hit Apple I and voila, more space to finish my creative idea. When making MIDI clips and editing envelopes, I think you'll find the next shortcut very helpful. Apple B will engage draw mode, which works much like a pencil on a sketch pad. You can draw and erase MIDI notes, and you can go into your envelopes and edit them in any way you wish, just by simply click and dragging the pencil on the screen. My last shortcut is a gem of a shortcut, and I just love it. It's Shift Apple I when you're in session view. Shift Apple I will capture and insert a scene. So say you have a bunch of clips that you want to start building scenes with. So you start triggering random clip combinations and you find one you like. Hit Shift Apple I and Live will automatically put those into their own scene. Wow, that's nice. How handy is that? Right on the fly. You're not quite finished yet, so you keep triggering more clips and you find another combination you like. So what do you do? Well, hit Shift Apple I on the fly, and voila, you've got another scene. This is really helpful because you can keep things organized by renaming things all on the fly, which I find to be just amazing for the creative flow. Just remember, on the fly, you shift Apple I. Goodbye.